Hi, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I'm here today to talk to you about adrenal fatigue testing. Adrenal fatigue testing is something that we do in our office for our patients because uh, in, today's, in today's stressful environment, we are feeling run down, we don't sleep op optimally, we don't fall asleep optimally, we don't stay asleep, we don't wake up feeling refreshed, and we go to our doctor and he or she does blood work and we find that nothing is positive or nothing is, is, I don't have, all my tests are normal, but why do I feel so crappy? So in our office, we have started to do what's called adrenal, adrenal fatigue testing, and I wanted to talk to you about that today. So what I have here is one of the kits that we have. It's called um, a Flexi Matrix kit, and we, we use a lab called Diagnostex. They're one of the best in the country for saliva testing. So uh, we do some saliva testing samples and I want to talk to you today about the difference between saliva testing for uh, cortisol levels and blood testing. So if you've been to your doctor and your doctor has done an adrenal test or a cortisol test for you, they've probably done a cortisol test with a blood test. And that's typically the standard uh, medical standard uh, um, diagnostic value that we do for adrenal testing. Um, and it's very solid. You'll get a lot of information. However, you won't get a lot of information as well compared to the salivary testing. The salivary testing is just like it sounds, not the most pleasant. We spit into a tube. And um, the easy thing about that is we don't have to get our blood drawn. And, um, and the other thing about the saliva testing is it's the free fraction of the hormone. So when you're doing blood testing, you're testing the bound fraction of the hormone. So that's the bound part that's um, no longer available for use, whereas which you can still get a lot of information from if you have low or high bound uh, form of a cortisol, you can yield a lot of information. But the free fraction is the, the amount that's available for use, and that's in the saliva. The other things that's beneficial about the saliva samples are you can do it over the course of a day. And because we're measuring our cortisol rhythm, which means our circadian rhythms, we should have high adrenal values in the, in the, in the um, morning time, and then we should have low adrenal values or cortisol values in, in the evening time. And if you do a blood sample, you're only taking it one time, and it depends on a lot of variables go into that. You may not be taking it at the beginning of the day. And the most importantly, the reason why the cortisol values are so effective through saliva is from a pre-post. If we get a lot of information uh, deemed from a saliva sample that, um, that we can make some changes and then retest, then it's basically a benchmark to be able to tell us how we're doing. So your doctor may say, oh, the adrenal test for saliva samples for cortisol measures, is it, there's no value to it, but I would have to completely disagree. So um, I wanted to talk to you why I started doing it in my office. Uh, I injured my back two and a half years ago and I went into a complete fatigue zone. And, uh, and so what happened was I would crash in the middle of the day, wasn't sleeping well, had brain fog, and it was just the impetus for me to be fatigued and burnt out. So if you're watching this video and you've had a major injury like a car accident or you've, you, a lifting injury, a work injury, uh, a stress, which we all have stress, um, then potentially that could have been the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back and now you're going into adrenal fatigue. So uh, the best thing to do is to get tested so that you can figure out where your adrenal glands stand at this point and, and then come up with a great solution uh, nutritionally, holistically, and, uh, and lifestyle change-wise to fix them. And they're pretty easy to fix. So I wanted to talk to you about how this works. So basically, with this adrenal sample, what we're doing is we have, uh, we do, we run a flexi matrix, which means I can just order a la carte test and it keeps the cost down. Now that's, oops, that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about today is is the cost. A lot of the times insurance is not going to pay for this. Now we can try to create what's called a super bill and the super bill will um, put a code down and you could submit it to your insurance and see if you can get reimbursed and we have found that some of our patients have been uh, but because a lot of your tests are normal and they're in a laboratory range normal not a functional range normal um, the insurance is not making it or deeming it medically necessary and unfortunately you're not having your test paid for. So um, when we run a flexi -made matrix, uh, we bill you, the patient, and the testing can be anywhere between $125 to um, $250. So basically what we do 
is we do we have four vials here. We have a, a morning a morning or a fasting. So this is the first one that we spit into uh, after we've had a fast of eight hours. Um, usually we rinse our mouth the day of the testing. There's no caffeine. There's some no um, hormones, uh, no creams, and um, and then I'll even go into how you should be eating. But with this particular fat, this particular uh, sample is you have an eight-hour fast. You rinse your mouth before you do it, and then you have to make sure you get enough saliva to get into the top of the tube. There, that's a bit challenging for a lot of my patients, to be honest with you. And we found a clinical pearl of just putting a little touch of lemon juice or a lemon onto the tongue, and that will help you. Um, um, spew out a lot of saliva. The next sample is our noon sample. This is between 10 and 12. I usually encourage my patients to have a carb challenge meal before we do this sample, so about an hour before the sample. So if we're doing it between 11 and 1, at 12 o'clock, let's say we do our sample. At, one at 11 o'clock, I would want you to take 75 grams of carbohydrates before we do this, and that will tell me what your insulin levels are doing. It's very, very important. Your insulin levels will, um, will tell me a lot about how you're uptaking cortisol or how you're taking sugar levels. Um, basically, what will happen is if you have a high insulin level after an hour, we know you're insulin resistant, and that may be that blood sugar dysregulation will be driving your adrenal glands even higher, and that will be something we'd have to fix. So we can get a lot of information from just doing a challenge meal. If we did a challenge meal, we wouldn't be doing the Flexi Matrix. We would actually be doing the, the ASI panel, which you don't really need to know the difference. It just the, the, the difference is it will give me more information. So then the last, the second, the third sample is the afternoon. That's between four and six. Again, um, it, we, we suggest that you haven't eaten within an hour of, of taking the, of the test. And, uh, and then the last sample is at between 12, 10 and 12 at night. And, and then what will happen is you'll put it back in this, in this, co in this, in this um, protective wrap here. And then you'll, you'll put your name and the date on, on these particular samples. And then we will suggest, you'll put those in your fridge. And, and then the next day, it comes already contained with a UPS label. And then basically, you just have to mail it off. And that's it. So I will probably get my results back in probably a week. And that's why I want to talk to you a little bit about the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to come a little bit closer to the guide. And this is actually my test, so I don't mind showing you. So what we're looking at was most importantly is our key. We're looking at our different rhythms. And you can see here, um, the, we, this is the ideal zone of where you should be. And then this is where I am. So if you notice, I am below those level or reference ranges. So in the morning, I wake up, I have a cortisol load of 11. It should be between 13 to 24. So that means I'm waking up with a, not a lot of energy. And, um, and I need to bring that up. Then at, at um, between 11 and 1, I'm at 4, and I should be between 5 and 10. So again, I don't have a lot of, of energy at that point either. And then at um, between 4 and 5, I get up a little bit between, between 3 and 4. So I'm at the low range of normal. And then between uh, 10 and midnight, I'm at 2, and again, I'm at the low range of normal. So if this was you and I was trying to improve your values, then we're looking at, at this is an HPA problem, meaning we're not signaling the, the, the adrenal glands as a chronic stress response. We're not signaling the adrenal glands effectively. The feedback loop is not working, and I'd want to go on some kind of supplement or some kind of natural, um, natural program to boost my cortisol level. So we want to bring that up. I don't actually have my, my, my second test with me. I can make another video and show you how much I improved on that. So that would be the first thing. The good thing about this is you can also tell your rhythm. So you can see my rhythm is actually normal. You can see I kind of go down and I follow the curve the way I should. Um, however, I'm just not, my quantity is not high enough. But I'll see, I'll see results where one starts off high, comes low, then comes high. And that means there's a rhythm problem. So that means a person maybe, uh, let's say they were here, they wake up with very little energy, then they come to here and they have all sorts of energy, then they crash 
and then they come up again. So that's a feedback problem. The, the rhythm is off. That's a hippocampus problem. Those people probably have really bad memories and we got to regulate their hippocampus a lot better. So we have um, some supplements that we used for that. So this is probably the most important um, diagram on, on the adrenal, on the adrenal gland, gland or adrenal stress index. It tells us about what can mess up our adrenal glands. Sugar glycemic uh, problem. So let's say 85 to 99 is what you should be between um, for, for a blood resting glucose value. Um, but um, from, a, from a laboratory range, it says 65 to 110. So that's way too broad. We want to be between 85 to 99. And many times um, I'll find, in fact, patients don't have too high blood sugar levels, but they have too low blood sugar levels. And what will happen is they'll have, say, 65, 70, 75. So if this is something like you, go check your blood results. You may find you're below 85. Then you probably have what's called reactive hypoglycemia, meaning you crash throughout the day. If you get shaky, lightheaded, jittery, if you haven't eaten, you are hypoglycemic and your adrenal glands are going haywire. You're probably using a lot of caffeine and, and stimulants and, and sodas and, and energy drinks to, to boost you up, and that's really just killing your adrenal glands. The other, um, other areas that induce cortisol to be released is sympathetic overflow. Um, that's just when we uh, are, are con may potentially our nervous system can't wind down. Um, we just have too much adrenaline, too much stress, um, and then that will cause our cortisol to be released too much. We talked about tissue damage and inflammation and pain, car accidents, um, uh, lifting injuries, um, infections, gut infections, any inflammation in the body, and I find a lot of the times gut infections. And then mental and emotional stressors has a lot to do with the sympathetic overflow, and that's what we will see um, that cause an inducer to stress as well. So um, there's other values on here as well. I don't want to get into too much, but we can see our DHEA values. And really the most important thing to see on this is there are seven stages of adrenal fatigue. Um, a, a stage one and stage two are adapted to stress. So someone with stage one and stage two, you're going to see them way across the board up here. Someone with stage, um, stage three and stage four, they are maladaptive. Um, maladaptive basically means um, that you have some good days, some bad days, some good days, some bad days. And, um, but if you have a really bad stressor on a particular day, it will wipe you out. And then lastly, you'll see stage uh, five, six, and seven. Um, we don't see a lot of sixes in the office. That has to do with DHEA supplementation. Um, but usually five and seven, these are the people that are just flatlining. So their, their cortisol output is just right on the, in, the, in the gutter. And these are people that just can't get out of bed in the mornings. They have no energy. And so it's really important to know what kind of what stage of adrenal exhaustion or, or burnout you're in so that we can appropriately suggest the, the right nutrients for you. Um, this is the actual ASI test. So the other things it gets into is your insulin levels. It also gets into your 17-OH progesterone. So that goes into our steroid pathway and tells us if there's raw materials that are missing upstream from the cortisol production. And if that's the case, you're typically going to see stage five and seven on these people. They may have to go with some kind of um, additional supplementation like pregnenolone supplementation or progesterone supplementation. Um, the total SIG A, this is if we have any immune challenges from infectious process from our membranes. That's our first line of defense. If that's depressed, then potentially we have a raging infection going on, and that may, may want us to do a, a metabolic profile in terms of a stool and evaluation to see if there's any pathogens as well. So, uh, and then the last thing it tells us if we have any gliadin antibodies. You've heard of people that are um, that have gluten or gluten sensitivities. This is okay. Um, the Sig A is is okay. Um, we do a better test in our office, so that's why many times I'll just do the um, the uh, Flexi Matrix that doesn't have all this. The Flexi Matrix basically just has um, the DHEA and then the four readings. So um, hopefully this is, didn't overwhelm you too much. I just wanted to give you some information today on adrenal fatigue testing and let you know that there's seven stages of adrenal fatigue. Uh, one and two are really high. Three and four are maladaptive, high and low. And five, six, and seven, mainly five and seven are fatigued. Which stage are you is very important. And um, 
Other things that may induce uh, adrenal fatigue are uh, is potentially gut infections, uh, pathogens like a parasite. Um, you can have a viral infection. You can have a bacteria infection. You can have H. pylori. So there's a lot of different things that can drive your cortisol levels to just fatigue too much, and we can fix those. And then lastly, your blood, um, just an injury. And in our office, we don't just do metabolic and neurologic care, but we also do musculoskeletal care as well. So hope you found this video informative. Um, if you have any more questions, then don't feel don't don't hesitate to call us and let us know. And um, we look forward to helping you with you and your adrenal fatigue. Thank you so much.